Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm going to photograph Gloucester Cathedral. So today I'm at Gloucester Cathedral and as you can see behind me it truly is a magnificent building. It's going to be slightly different than my normal videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some time walking around the outside of the building seeing what I can photograph. I'll give you a little bit of information about Gloucester Cathedral and Gloucester itself and then we're going to go inside the building and now if you are a Harry Potter fan you might recognize some locations because it was used as a film set for three of the Harry Potter films for some of the scenes in that film so we're going to have a look at that and other things within the building itself so come along and join me I know I'm really going to enjoy my photography Now if this is your first time visiting the channel, what I tend to do is landscapes and wildlife photography but every so often I tend to do something a little bit different like visiting the cathedral today but you'll also find tutorials and even some photoshop advice. So if it's something that interests you and you want to improve your photography then really do consider clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications and that way you'll make sure that you don't miss out on anything that I release in the future. Gloucester Cathedral is in the north of the city near the river and it was founded as an abbey in 681 and it's also the burial place of King Edward II. Gloucester is the county town of Gloucestershire, it's a cathedral city as you can see from behind me and it was founded in AD 97 by the Romans as an important city and colony. Very close to the cathedral are Gloucester docks as well, now they're not used as docks anymore but the warehouses are still there and today they've been converted into trendy pubs and shopping centres um, and make for quite a cultural quarter of the town. One of the problems I've got while photographing this um, building this morning is trying to fit everything in. Uh, it's almost impossible to get the whole um, of the outside of the cathedral in one shot because I've only got uh, a lens that opens up to 24 mil, so that's not quite wide enough and I can't get far enough back because of the buildings on the opposite side of the close. So what I've tried is an experiment. So I've done a photo montage. Now this is a little bit similar to a panorama except you take lots of different different pictures all over um, the building and then I'm going to try and combine them when I get back in Photoshop. Now I've never tried this before so it's a little bit of an experiment and it may not work because of all kinds of funky perspectives um, but we'll see how it looks and I'll show you the results now. Instead of trying to fit everything in the frame, one solution would be to try and zoom in a little bit and focus on a particular area. Now I've just focused on the tower, which is particularly ornate, and I've got some really nice detailed shots of that. Behind me is what is known as a knife angel and it's a national monument against violence and aggression and it tours the country visiting different cities. In 2014 the chairman of the British Ironworks Centre in Shropshire, Clive Knowles, came up with the idea to build a national monument and set up an amnesty and collected thousands of knives that were blunted and collected to form this sculpture here behind me. Families who have been affected by horrific knife crimes um, wanted to raise awareness and um, create something lasting and you can see the result here behind me.
As you can see behind me, this side of the church has been cleaned fairly recently and it really does show off the building to its true potential. Now, uh, the whole building has been cleaned um, and it's a really long process and I'm sure it costs lots of money. When we get inside, we'll see some of the cleaning process happening because of the scaffolding up. Um, but it really is worthwhile. Um, not only does it preserve the building, but it shows it off to its true potential. Now I've been staying in this area for a few days and I did call into Gloucester Cathedral a few days ago um, but I didn't bring any of my tripods with me and in this kind of situation with low lighting tripods are almost essential if you want to take good photographs because you need to slow the shutter speed down to get enough light into the camera. Now I did check with the people here at uh, the cathedral to make sure that it's okay to bring tripods and they're fine um, with me putting tripods up as long as you're considerate of the people around you and you're not taking up too much space or creating trip hazards. It's just a little bit of common sense really and if you ask most places are quite happy for you to um, responsibly use a tripod. In the center of the cloister is this courtyard and there's a lovely fountain here, but behind me you can see the scaffolding on the work that's going on to restore this internal part of the stonework and clean it up to bring it back to its former glory and make sure that it lasts for years to come. Just here in the cloisters is what appeared to be some kind of wash um, station. Um, I don't know what it was originally used for, but it is quite famous for a shot of Daniel Radcliffe stood by one of these pillars. So I couldn't resist doing the touristy thing and recreating that shot and taking a self portrait. Now, if you're a Harry Potter fan, I'm sure you'll recognize these corridors just here. They're part of the cloisters in Gloucester Cathedral. And there's a famous shot in one of the films where there's Harry and Ron walking down these corridors. And there's also several scenes where there's lots of school children as well in this um, location. Um, but regardless of the film, it is a really amazing bit of architecture. Up in the roof, um, there is so much intricate carving and it's a really uh, a wonderful space to be in and great for photography. I've come back outside. Um, it's a little bit difficult to film inside the cathedral because of the lack of light and the amount of people that are around and lots of the places are really echoey as well. So it's not really conducive to filming. But what I'll do is I'll leave you with some of my favorite shots from the morning.
Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been something a little bit different, but it's always good to try something out of the box, something that you're not completely comfortable with. And I have tried some different techniques this morning. Now, I don't know whether they'll come off until I get back in the computer and try them out, but it's always worth experimenting when you're out and about, just in case you get something a little bit different. Well, if you've enjoyed this video and have liked something a little bit different, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Vero account. That's at Dayton Photography. Leave me your comments there. And you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, and want to help support me to make future content like this, you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so head off over there, check out what's on offer, because a purchase really does help me out. And don't forget the super thanks button as well. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications, because it really helps me out, and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video. That goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here. But all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.